come here. Right, I won't talk to you, Cameron. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna get off you, yeah. Right. I could get you big and sound. No, 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 no. Old Testament, yeah. no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, no, what about no, the no. New Testament? Is this a stench to you? Or can you catch the smell of, hey, whatever's going on there is something that I need? So this is, this is, this is the dilemma that you have. 700 years later, a guy called Muhammad came and he wrote the Quran. And he said, no, Jesus was not the son of God. God need to go, no. But listen, what Wesley's saying to you here, mate, is like, I think there's a little bit of confusion. Do you know what I mean? And we say this out of great love for you, that God isn't an alien. Bruce Lee isn't at the right hand of God. You're not an alien. And you're not Bruce Lee. I'm Bruce Lee. Okay. Well, I appreciate the... I've got Bruce Lee's spirit in me. I ask that I... I know, die. but you don't... Listen, you don't need Bruce Lee's spirit in you. You need the Holy Spirit in you. Spirit of Bruce Lee, the priest of you bless me and said you have got Bruce Lee in you. I'm faster than Bruce Lee. Okay. Can I get him yeah, on your phone? I'll do it. He's, he's confused, he does a few martial arts in, but he's confused by my speed, aren't you? Come here. Alright, I won't talk to you, camera. Alright, I'm just going to go off here. Bye. Alright mate. Okay, but listen, can you do us a favour? Can you please appreciate that? I'm sure people will appreciate you doing that, but listen, we need you to understand that Jesus Christ is your only way. All these other things are not truth, brother. I'm but gonna bring my my, my um, karaoke down here. Right, okay. And I'm gonna I'm okay. gonna take the whole of the street. Well mate, listen, it's been lovely speaking to you. It's been lovely speaking um, to you. Do us a favour though, please. Um, consider what we're saying. Do you I know what I mean? I think you're some sort of angel sort of about it. No, don't bow to me. I'm not an angel. I'm, I'm not an angel. I'm just a man who's encountered Jesus Christ, who loves you, but you've got to come on me. All right, brother? I love you. God bless you. So, if you believe in the Bible, too, you have to chance. Dude, I need everything. Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know why I eat everything? Do you know what I think the problem is here? The problem is you, sir. You're just trying to win the argument. And you've got no argument. There's no argument. Jesus said, Jesus said. Amen. Right, okay. Let me just do the example of the iPhone. The iPhone represents man. How? This iPhone, when it's disconnected from the charger, what happens to it? It dies. The reason why you die is because Adam and Eve sinned against God and were separated from God. At that moment, death and decay happened. Now, sir, let me answer your question. Regarding two sex, let me answer your question. Regarding two sex, two sex. I love you, man. I love you and I care about you and I want to tell you the truth. Now, listen to this. The reason why I can eat shrimp and bacon is this. Jesus has declared all foods clean. Amen. Amen. So I can wake on the morning, I got the legs. I can get the bacon salmon. No, 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 no. Old Testament, yeah. no, it doesn't. Yeah. No, no, what about no, the New no. Testament? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can't under... Is that almost like you talk with it? Guys, oh, you can't understand the Old Testament without the New Testament. Jesus says, don't worry about what goes into your mouth, because what, what, what happens to what goes into your mouth? Goes out your other end. He says, worry about what comes out of your mouth, because what comes out of your mouth, that's what defiles a person. Let me ask you this, right? You know when you swear and you curse, that doesn't matter, does it? You can, you can call people narcissistic, you can be nasty, you can swear. Oh, but, but you shouldn't eat bacon and you shouldn't eat shrimp. Sir, so you should care so much more about what comes out of your mouth about rather than what goes in your mouth. My friends, listen. No, sir, I'm sure me understanding. Oh, okay, okay, guys, let's go to the Old Testament. Let's ask him this. I've got a question for you. Why did God tell the people of Israel to not eat certain foods? 
No, I want you to answer it. Because you're the one who, you're the one who's seen the Old Testament, Old Testament. Why did God tell it? Why did God see it? In Leviticus chapter 11. Why did God see that in Leviticus chapter 11? Is it not? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. You know why? He was saying to Israel, guys, you're not going to be like the other nations. You're going to eat certain... Dude, this is, this is, dude, children can understand, this is the simple meaning of the text. He says, Israel, you're going to be different to me. He tells us, he says, Neil, you're going to be different to the other nations. You're not going to eat this, and you're not going to dress like that, and you, and it, that was the meaning. Why else? Do you think, do you think seafood, do you think seafood actually defiles your soul? Do you think when you eat, it doesn't, does it, that's stupid, do you think when you eat bacon, you become defiled? No, I'll tell you what defiles you, your sin, that's what defiles you, that's what makes you wicked in the sight of God, that's what separates you from God, what goes into your mouth, that's going out the other end, guys, you need to be ready to stand before God, and the only way you can be, is if you've got a saviour, that saviour is Jesus Christ, turn to him this day, repent of your sins and believe the gospel. Can you hear me back there, sister? You can, you can. Okay, that's fine. As long as somebody can hear me, that's what we're here for. And the reason that we are here today is no other reason than to share the gospel. But I'm guessing that the step, the sign, the Bible, the guy that's been around here, the track that you've got in your hand, sir, probably gives that away. Or does it? Because often you see people with steps, signs, speakers, tracts, that's, you can have that mate because I've already got the Lord Jesus Christ thank you very much often you see that um, but what you get isn't the gospel what you get is not the gospel at all in fact you don't have to look too far on this street to see something that kind of looks like the gospel but it isn't because let's be honest to share the gospel in its entirety to read the word of God for what it says in this day and age well it's offensive it's offensive. I'm not going to be around the bush. Of course it's offensive. When I was far away from God, it was offensive to me. And do you know why it's offensive to most people here? Because it tells you that you're wrong. That's why. The moment that somebody tells you that you're wrong, nine times out of ten, you're not going to say, thank you, I needed that. You're going to say, who are you talking to? Don't tell me that I'm wrong. You've seen the state of your life. I do me, you do you, keep it to yourself. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, of course it does. Because that's what we do. We're protective over how we live. Actually, I would say, biblically, we're protective over our sin. So what happens to appease people, not to offend people, to make people feel good, we tell them a different type of gospel. We tell them about a type of Jesus. See, there's a type of Jesus that's acceptable to the world. The type of Jesus that many celebrities will grab hold of. The type of Jesus that just wants to give you cuddles and tell you everything's going to be okay and that you want healthy, wealthy, happy forever after. No pain, no suffering. Manchester, out of great love and compassion for you, that is not the gospel. It's a type of gospel. But why do we come to the streets here today? Why do I make a fool of myself on a... On a on a step in Manchester, which isn't my city, telling people a message that they don't really want to hear, when there's other types of Gospels very close by that will tell you what you want to hear. Well, the Bible tells us that the charge of this, sir, is love. It's because I love you. Love you, sister. Bit weird that, a random guy in the street telling you that he loves you, but I'm not talking about the type of love that the world says I even love him. It's weird to the world to hear that. Here comes the rain. It's weird to the world to hear that, sir. I love you too. It's weird to, it's weird to hear that because the world thinks love is agreement. The world thinks love is doing what makes me feel good. The world thinks love is defined by your response to it. And the Bible says this. If anybody, anybody... God bless you, little one. If anybody, an angel, a Jehovah's Witness, a Muslim, a celebrity, a so-called Christian, 
proclaims another gospel. Anybody, sir, let them be accursed. Strong words. Why? Because it's a simple message, brother. It's a simple message, but it's the message that saves. It's a message that you need. It's a message that pierces your heart. It's a message that saves your soul. It's the message that makes all things new. It's the message that cuts through to the heart of sinful, broken, deprived, lustful, dark humanity. It's a message that brings dead things to life. And the reason it brings dead things to life because the gospel, brother, is about Jesus Christ who died and rose to life. And if I was to ask Manchester today, are you happy when you see a street preacher? No, your face says no. Like your face wrinkles up. Your street preaching disgusts me. Are you happy when you see a preacher in the streets telling you about Jesus? No, another one, your face, it wrinkles up. And it's dis it disgusts you. But you know what the Bible says about that? It says to some, the, the aroma of Christ, the aroma of the good news, is a stench of death. Because if you believe this or not, I heard this last night, I found it quite entertaining. Christians stink. Christians absolutely smell, especially preachers. Because preachers, Christians who live it loud and proud, brother, we give off this aroma. And the aroma that we give off to some is absolutely disgusting. Have you ever smelled something that makes you, your face turn up? It's like what the guys did here before when I asked them about Christ. They repelled, they curled up, they said, shut up, go away. You want to escape the smell, right? But to others who have been saved, sir, it's a beautiful scent of life. Is this a stench to you? Or can you catch the smell of, hey, whatever's going on there is something that I need. The thing that we need more than anything, the thing that you need in your life is the one who gives you it. The peace that you need in your life is the Prince of Peace. The joy that you're searching for in your life is only found in the joy of the Lord. Come to Jesus because he paid the cost for you at the cross so he could do so. As he says, you know, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. So this, this, you know, when Jesus came and preached things about himself, he knew that people wouldn't like it. People would hate it. This is some of the things that he said. My friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, 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 can, can you forgive sin? But, but you can sometimes, God, like if I sinned against you, you could forgive me, couldn't you? You'd have to forgive me, right? And if I sinned against you, then I would hope that you would forgive me. And Jesus says, well, okay, right? Anyone can say I forgive your sin, but just to prove it, just to prove it, right? My friend, take up your bed and walk. Right now, you have to bear in mind, this guy was crippled. This guy didn't have an ability to walk. It could have been likely that his legs were deformed, and then all of a sudden, he picks up his bed. Imagine his hand on the first night, and he picks up his bed. You see, that's different now, because when he says your sins are forgiven, but then he backs it up with a work like that, you then have to think, wait a minute, is this just a, is this yet a, any other prophet? Like, you have to. Let me give you another one. Um, Jesus said this to the Pharisees, he said, Before Abraham was, I am. Now, in Exodus chapter 3, which Muslims believe to be the word of God, uh, Moses wrote this, it says, uh, Moses uh, says to God, God, who shall I tell you has, has sent me to go and tell Pharaoh to release the people of Israel? And God says to him, go and tell them, I am has sent you. I am that I am, right? God, what, what's he say? But what does God mean when he says, I am that I am? It means that he's self-existent, right? It means that there's not, that he has no beginning, he has no end. There's nothing that controls him. He is completely all in all, right? He's, he's, he's without beginning, without end. He is the self-existent one. He doesn't need you to live. He doesn't need me to live. He doesn't need anyone to live. And you know what Jesus said to the Pharisees? He says, before Abraham was, in other words, before Abraham existed, I am. Now, now you have to understand that was very blasphemous if a man said that. A prophet could never say, call himself, I am. 
Only God can say, I am that I am, right? Jesus says, I am <laughs> that I am. I am Yahweh, I am Jehovah, I am Elohim, I am God Almighty. Let me give you one more. Jesus said this, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. <laughs> Powerful, right? I mean, imagine I said to you, um, if you've seen me, you've seen God. That would be a lie. Jesus stared these people in the eyes and he said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Do you know what they did? They picked up stones to stone him because him being a man made himself equal with God. Can I ask you a question? What does it mean if something equals something else? It's of the same value, right? One equals one, four equals two times two, 64 equals eight times eight, right? <laughs> so, so there's an equality. And Jesus, you know what Jesus is essentially doing there? He, he puts himself here and then he gets a big equal sign. And then he puts the Father on the other side. And he says, if you've seen me, you've seen him. So this is, this is, this is the dilemma that you have. 700 years later, a guy called Muhammad came and he wrote the Quran. And he said, no, Jesus was not the son of God. He was just a very important prophet. And one day he will come back and judge the world. I take issue with that. Why? Because of his self-revelation that he's already given. Because of what, of what he's already said about himself and what he's already did. You see, Jesus didn't just look up.